I feel like I might be going crazy. I don't know. Everything seemed fine in the beginning, but now it's starting to get a little weird. For background, I met Will at a party. One of my neighbors down the hall had a party when he first moved in, invited some of his friends and the neighbors. It was one of those bring your friends and your friends' friends. Will and I took bets on how long it would take for the party to get shut down. It only lasted an hour before the cops showed up because of a noise complaint. The neighbor's still a party animal, but he tends to do his partying elsewhere now. When we first started dating, Will was great. Like, literally perfect. I know everyone says that, especially in the beginning, but it was true. I was still working through my last breakup, but he was kind and supportive and patient. There was one time I was supposed to go out with Will, but my ex showed up outside my apartment, drunk, and by the time he left, I was so shaken up, I didn't want to go out anymore. Will surprised me by coming over anyway with takeout, and we just stayed inside for the night, watching corny Ghost Hunter episodes and playing board games. It was one of the best nights I ever had. It wasn't long before we became inseparable, which wasn't surprising because I tend to be a homebody. I didn't really have many friends. I tend to keep everyone at arm's length, so naturally, when we started dating, I mostly just hung out with Will. When I did finally introduce him to my family, they loved him. My dad tried to put on this tough guy facade, but later after we left, my mom told me he wouldn't stop talking about how great he thought Will was. And when I did introduce him to some of my friends, they loved him too. So it's kind of surprising that he's acting the way he is now. Lately he seems different. He looks so tired all the time and I think he hasn't been sleeping because he's yelled at me a few times over dumb stuff and he's not usually one to yell. For a little context, Will works in IT, or something techy. He's explained it to me a few times, but I'm not really good with technology, so I always get lost. I think a lot of his friends are techies too. This will come in later. Like he went off on me the other day because I didn't have a password on my phone. He said any psycho could pick it up and install a tracker on it and follow me. I was dumbfounded. I asked him who would even do that. And how would they even get my phone if it was with me all the time? He just mumbled something and stormed out, slamming the door behind him. I guess he's right. I really should have a password on my phone. It's usually never more than an arm's reach away, but you never know what could happen. Will was usually so level-headed and practical, this kind of paranoia was out of character for him. And then last week, I didn't come home right away, from work, and he blew up at me. Kept saying that I should have been home sooner. Where was I? Who was I with? Then he said he wanted to install a two-way GPS tracker on my phone, so we would always know where the other was. I think he only got the two-way tracker, so I would feel better about letting him install it. But I honestly wasn't going to use it. I trusted Will. If he said he was going out with his friends, then I believed that was where he was. I had no reason to not believe him. But I was totally appalled and honestly a little scared with the way he was acting. I just let him install it. He left pretty quickly after that. He's been going out a lot lately. I don't know where he goes, but sometimes he goes out and he's gone for hours. He never says where he's going either, just mumbles something and then leaves in a hurry. I guess the late nights are starting to get to him, but I guess the last straw was my friend's. When we first started dating, Will was eager to meet my friends. He joked it was important for us to have other people, so we didn't get sick of each other. I think he just felt bad because he would come home after being out with his friends to find me on the couch watching TV or knitting. I'm sure a lot of people would think it's kind of pathetic, me waiting for him to come home like that, but I really didn't mind. Last Saturday, my friends Megan and Rachel dropped by. We all met in college, even rented an apartment together after college. I moved to my current apartment to be closer to work and my family, but they all stayed behind and still live together. They're only a couple towns over, but you know how it goes. You get caught up in work, weekends start to be the only time you can relax, you get busy, you start seeing someone, your friends kind of fall to the sidelines. None of us took it personally, we all know what happens, and they've even had their own stuff going on. We stay up to date with each other on social media, but it's just not the same as seeing your friends and catching up in person. So when they said they were in town shopping, 
I jumped at the chance to have them over for dinner. Will was working late that night. I ordered takeout and cracked open a bottle of wine, and we spent the night gossiping and watching bad reality TV. We were a few bottles in when Will just barged in. He stopped short when he saw them. I could see his entire mood change, but he recovered quickly. He gave a small smile, said hello, made some excuse about needing to get some work done, and locked himself in his office. He was polite enough, but I know him well enough to know when he's super pissed. I noticed Megan and Rachel gave each other a weird look, but I just brushed it off. Later they said he think he was just mad I was hanging out with someone who wasn't him. After they left, we got in a huge fight. Will was furious, and I'll admit I was pretty heated. But I think the amount of wine I had was a contributing factor on my end. I had no idea what his problem was. All of a sudden, he was the one who was always pushing me to hang out with people, make new friends, stop spending my nights waiting for him to get home. And then Will started telling me I shouldn't hang out with Megan and Rachel. He said they're not good people. I don't know what they've been up to. He barely knew them. He'd met them a few times and they'd all gotten along just fine then. So what was so different now? I tried to ask him what he was talking about, but he wouldn't say. Honestly, the way he was acting had me a little scared. Then he told me he didn't want me to see them at all anymore. It was so unlike him. I was taken aback. I didn't know what to say to him. He just kept saying they're not good people. Sure, they can be a little bitchy, but who isn't? And it's not like he can tell me what to do or order me around. I'm not a little kid, and he's not in charge of me. Side note, I've never met any of his friends. Every time I ask or suggest, having a little get-together, he just brushes it off and says they're tech nerds who don't do well with other people. He says girls make them nervous. It all sounds like crap to me. I tried adding some of them on Facebook, but they never responded to my request. I didn't know what else to do, so I went online. Because, of course, the best thing to do when you're upset is to go on the internet. Just like when you're not feeling well, the best way to handle it is to check the internet. And then the next thing you know, you think you've got cancer, and you better go see your doctor immediately. I read some similar stories from other women, and even some men too. It starts out like a fairy tale. The relationship is perfect. Everything is great until the couple starts to settle in, and then their true colors come out. A lot of other people's stories suggested Will's behavior was abusive. Maybe I was in denial. But that didn't seem like the right word to describe it. He never hit me or anything, but... Yeah, I guess he did yell at me a lot more now. There were a few times when I still got butterflies about him coming home. But maybe I just read it wrong. Maybe it was anxiety. The internet said the way he's acting now, not letting me see my friends, is a huge red flag. They tossed around a lot of words like isolating and grooming and manipulative. I'll admit, I was wary when he came home the next night. As soon as he walked in the door, I was on edge. I felt like I was just sitting there waiting for another outburst. I also felt guilty and ashamed for thinking Will could be abusive. But they said the way I was feeling was because of the abuse, too. I just don't know anymore. He seems totally normal, totally fine. Almost seems like his old self but I feel tense whenever I'm around him. It's starting to exhaust me. As soon as he enters the room, or I get a text from him, my heart skips a beat and I get a surge of adrenaline. They said that might be fight or flight, or maybe these people on the internet are just full of crap. So I decided to do something about it. A couple days ago, Will went out in the middle of the night. I'm pretty sure he thought I was asleep, but I waited a couple seconds and followed him. It was cold outside, being that we're in the middle of winter, but surprisingly, Will didn't take his car. Walking made following him easier, but I knew it wouldn't be long until I was freezing. I followed Will into town. I've never followed someone before, but I made sure to stay a ways back, like in TV shows. The more I followed him, the more I felt like something wasn't right. Maybe it was drugs. Drugs would explain the change in his behavior, the paranoia, the sudden outbursts. Maybe I was following Will to a drug deal. But it wasn't a drug deal. I followed him to one of the clubs in town. It's not really a club. I think they're trying to get the club off the ground here, but this really just isn't a party town. There aren't enough people here anyway, 
Daba Club, but they were certainly trying to draw in an underground, party type of crowd. It was way out of place. As I was following Will, a pretty big crowd spilled into the street from the club. I lost sight of him and I immediately felt panic set in. Was this like a scene in all the movies where I lost the person I was tailing, only to have him come up behind me, startle me and confront me for following him? Then I remembered the tracker. He said it was two-way. I'm pretty sure he only did that to make me feel better about it, like he wasn't using it to watch me. I don't think he ever counted on me actually using it against him. The tracker showed he was a couple blocks over, circling towards the back of the club. I waited until the app showed the coast was clear, and then I picked up his trail again. It wasn't long before he was a few yards in front of me again. I followed him to the alley that ran behind the club. Ducking down behind a dumpster, I positioned myself so I could see a little around the corner of it, but also hear whatever he said pretty clearly. Are you following us? I clamped a hand over my mouth, just in time to stifle a gasp. I recognized that voice. A quick peek around the dumpster confirmed it. Will was talking to Megan and Rachel. A million questions immediately swirled around my head. Why were they here? Why was he meeting them? What was the real reason he didn't want me to see them? You need to leave Emma alone. Will's voice was colder than I'd ever heard it before. If I wasn't watching him, I wouldn't have even known it was Will who was talking. They laughed and echoed what he had said in a mocking tone. Come to think of it, I wasn't sure I'd ever heard my friends be this catty either. What was going on? Does Emma even know where you are? Rachel sneered at him. Yeah, where does Emma think you are right now? Megan chimed in. I retreated back inside my hiding place, appalled. I'd never heard my friends talk to someone like this. Something about this wasn't right. Had Will been right about them the whole time? Just leave her alone, and we won't have a problem, he said. I could tell he was talking through the gritted teeth. They just laughed at him, but the longer they laughed, the deeper their voices got. I leaned out from behind the dumpster again to see what was going on. Dim alley lighting made it difficult to see what was happening, but the scene before me turned my blood to ice. Their necks grew longer and longer, their heads now leering down at Will, their hands stretched, and there was a snapping noise as their fingers became sharp, pointed claws. Their faces contorted and pulled until Megan's nose became some sort of snout, complete with gnashing fangs. Rachel's face changed into some sort of beak. The light glinted off her razor-like teeth. Under my winter coat, goosebumps crawled across my skin as I watched their eyes turn black. I let out a gasp as a horrible stench filled the air. Suddenly, time stood still. Slowly, they all turned to look at the source of the noise. Frozen with fear, I watched as dread filled Will's eyes. Megan and Rachel both had a sinister look in their dead eyes, as thick saliva dripped down their teeth and started to pool at their feet. Go! Will's voice cut through the night like a hot blade. My heart jackhammering, I scrambled to my feet and raced for the mouth of the alley. As I turned the corner, I looked back at Will. He had a determined look in his eye as the creatures in front of him started to growl. He was doing his best to hold them back, and the longer I stayed, the more difficult it was for him. I'm ashamed to say I didn't wait to see what happened. I'm sick with guilt that I didn't do more. I just ran. I ran all the way home. And when I got there, I locked the door and waited for Will to come home. But he still hasn't come home. I've been sitting here all night, too afraid to sleep. I tried calling him, but I've been calling him every hour, but it just goes to voicemail. I've messaged one of his friends, but he hasn't answered yet either. It's morning now. I'll call the police if I don't hear from him soon. Thank you for making it this far. I am so happy that you made it to the end of the video. So if you liked it, give it a like, let YouTube know that it was worth listening to. And if you really like me and really enjoy my content, consider subscribing. I don't ask for much, but just consider it. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter at S underscore A underscore Midnight. If you would like to follow me on Instagram and visually see the shenanigans I get up to, Stories After Midnight is the handle. 
more of a podcast fan, I have the Midnight Podcast. You can find that anywhere you find a podcast. And lastly, if you would like to give your hand at writing, send me a story. Head on over to storiesaftermidnight.redix.app. You can find the link in my Twitter bio and you can send me a story. I will take a look at it if it's written well and I will consider reading it. So thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.